Hey everybody, my name is No Learner. I'm the product director at Two Octobers in lovely Denver. I love tools. I love automation. I love doing all kinds of things that are super cool. But the core of what I love is solving problems. And I love really difficult ones that other people don't want to touch. And the reason that I like them is that inside problems is opportunity. So Today, I wanna to talk with you a little bit about the art of solving problems. And we're gonna do it by going over two things. We're gonna look at a framework that I use to solve problems. And then secondarily, we're gonna look at a problem as an example to look at how different approaches can have different outcomes uh, for you as you work. So why don't we jump in now and we'll start going over our framework. All right, so we're gonna talk about synthesis today. Synthesis is the art of tying different tools and approaches and mental models together to find the most appropriate ones that'll help us get across the finish line. What I found in doing SEO over the past bunch of years is that there are tons of tools. There's no shortage of tools. They all do tons of cool things but they all have limited scope and limits to what they can accomplish. And so to accomplish really difficult problem solving, you have to find ways to bring the tools together to make your life easier. We're gonna discuss our framework for solving problems. So we're gonna go over two things today. We're gonna to talk about a framework for solving problems, and then we're gonna use a specific use case in order to dive into this a lot deeper. There's this book called Range by David Epstein. The reason why I think it's amazing is that it aligns with the way that I work and it has reinforced some of the things that felt right to me about solving problems, but also helped me get a little bit more focused in how I do it. And the some of the core concepts are dabble, play. Just playing with different tools and playing with different ways of solving problems helps you build a toolkit that you can draw from later when you're faced with new challenges that you've never faced before. And by having as many different approaches in the back of your mind, you'll have a sense of how you can link one tool and one way of solving, solving problems together. Asking great questions is where we begin because it helps us define the problem really, really deeply. Our whole framework is built on asking great questions. They help us think through all the complex challenges that we're gonna face, and they also guide us when we hit the limit of what our tools can accomplish. They'll help you understand like, what are my blind spots? What could go wrong? Like really, really wrong. How can I solve the problem as simply as possible? Because the more complex your solution is, the more likely it is to fail. And as we look at our problem, you'll kind of get a sense of that in a couple minutes. When you start solving the problem and you're starting to investigate the different ways that you think you might solve it, to not go down rabbit holes at first. You wanna stay on the surface as much as possible so that you can really learn about the different tools, about the different uh, ways that they might be able to work together. And what we're doing here is we're surveying the landscape. We're really trying to get to know everything about all the different ways that we might be able to solve it. And then once you feel like you really understand what you're trying to accomplish, then you can plan your attack, right? And then after you have a great plan in place, that's when you start to go down the path of executing. And after you do, you can analyze the results and refine your approach to make it better and better. I have a client that's, in, that's an e-commerce client and we were noticing that they were experiencing tons of changes with the, the brands that were selling really well on their website. They had had one brand that had been super prominent for years and years and years and had driven between 20 and 45% of their revenue year in, year out. At some point that changed though, and as we were trying to tease out what was going on, 
we had a we had this nagging suspicion that that we had content that was no longer being indexed by Google. Here's the question: What's indexed on my site? Like, if we have less than a thousand pages, it's pretty easy. You just go to Google Search Console. But what if we've got fifteen thousand pages, or fifty thousand pages, or a million pages on our site? Do you remember our questions from before? Well where would I find that information? How would I learn where my content's getting indexed? Well, approach number one is to go to the SERPs and do a, a site domain search, right? Well, this is where we run into some really interesting challenges. If you look at the top there on this one site that we have, we can see that Google's showing that there are 25,500 and something results. And if we look inside Search Console, we have a super different number. So which is it? And what can I rely on? <laughs> this is how I felt when, when I couldn't get my answer in an easy way. So we knew the data lives in the SERPs. Gray out warning. Uh, to get our answer, we decided that we wanted to scrape the SERPs. Before we go super deep, just keep in mind that this is totally like not okay in terms of Google's terms of service. Having said that, uh, it really is the only way that you can get the answer these days. So I'm going to share with you three different approaches. Uh, they all work for solving the problem. But after we look at them, you're probably going to come to the, come to the uh, realization that one of these approaches is pretty hacky. One is, as Nico Brooks from Two Octobers would say, is pretty hinky. And the, and the last one, I think, is pretty killer. All right, so approach number one is you can build a crawl list via a site map using app script or even a cloud function which which is super cool i was really excited about that i had an opportunity to use cloud functions you then encode the urls and you use a proxy um, when you use screaming frog so you have to encode your urls so that they'll be ready for screaming frog you then crawl the serps with screaming frog using Scraper API's proxy. You then export that crawl into Google Drive. And then you have Zapier listening to that drive folder. And when there's a new uh, file in the folder, Zapier will send a post to an app script function, which will pull the data into Google Sheets. And then you can visualize it in Data Studio. All right, so how many tools do we have working here? We've got App Script, Screaming Frog, Zapier, App Script again. There's a bunch of different tools involved. There's a bunch of different ways that it could fail, right? The first thing that we did was we used App Script. So you put a sitemap link into this box, and then you use, a, you use this App Script, and it goes get all URLs. And then in the process, it'll pull all the URLs into this sheet. And then you ex you copy that next page, put it into Screaming Frog, Screaming Frog in list mode, searches for all of those URLs. And at the same time, here's a little bit of magic. We're using the custom extraction in order to find the X path for each of the individual uh, anchor links inside the search results. And it'll pull in all 10 URLs on each page for us to compare later using App Script. After we run, we run the um, we run the crawl, it then pulls the file into the drive folder. And then when that uh, Zapier posts to App Script, it then will crawl through each of those URLs uh, and it compares them to all the results from the scrape and it then will determine whether each of these URLs were indexed or not. Super cool, right? It's awesome, it works, it's really fun. I thought it was really neat. Uh, approach number two, we were gonna use Node. Still, there's too many tools involved, super frustrating, too many points of failure, right? How about this? Does this look more interesting as a solution to you? This is when I started to get like really jacked about the opportunity. 
What if instead we could have an app that is front facing, meaning that it has a front end to the application. You plug in a sitemap URL into the tool. You also put in an email address. Then this node app does all of the work that we've talked about behind the scenes. I wanted to just share it with you a little bit because I'm like crazy excited. I spent the past couple weeks thinking about this tool and I spent the last little bit building it so that I'd have it ready for you. The benefits of building the web app are all about the user. You know, when you have something like this built, it makes it very, very easy for people to get work done in the agency or outside of it, right? So all they have to do is put in a sitemap URL and you also put in your email address here so that when it's done running, it'll send you a CSV output of the results. And it'll also inject all the data up into BigQuery so that we can do analysis on all of the information. It also reads, reads back what's going on and how long it took to run. And um, it'll send an email to the user, which is really cool. It'll say, hey there, here are your indexation results for the domain, and then it'll send you a, a CSV. You're gonna see items that are in your sitemap that maybe shouldn't be indexed in the first place. You might notice, however, that you'll have tons of different staging pages or test pages or random pages in your sitemap that you would never wanna be indexed. This is a great opportunity to, to think through those. Uh, you'll also see content that might be money pages on your site that, that like you have to have indexed. It might be the most important key brand. Whatever it is, if it's a money page, this tool will help you quickly analyze at least where to start looking. This is what it feels like when you, when you finish a tool and you solve the problem. I found a way to deal with, with a challenge in a way that's simple and scalable that can crawl hundreds of thousands of URLs that also will allow our team to work quickly and efficiently. So what? Why is any of this important? You know, my hypothesis up front was, I think we're selling a lot less of this brand because either the product detail pages for that brand or category pages that this brand is prominent on aren't indexed. And by running the tool, you know, we found that that was partially the case. I can also see that there, if there are trends, I can see if there are page types that are not as indexed as highly as other page types on a site. I can also see um, trends around like intro copy and catalog structure or collection pages. I can see the impact of structured data potentially. And I can also see which of my money pages need a little bit of love. Might be internal linking, it might be content quality improvement. Um, and I also have a tool that I can build on to do cool things with in the future. And it's not about the tool. It's about having an approach to solve problems in your back pocket so that when you're faced with a new problem that you've never faced before, you can think through all the different ways that you've solved problems in the past. And you can say things like, well, there was that one time that I used Zapier to do this with that, and I used another automation tool called Integromat to connect to AppScript. And you'll start to have all these different things that you can do with all these different tools to solve problems in ways that other people can't do it. So if I can leave you with a closing thought, it's this. Dabble, play, struggle, and embrace the struggle, learn because these are the things that are gonna make you so much better at your job, excel in your career, and drive ROI for your clients. Thanks so much, have a great day.